All right, we're going to talk about chain fires here. What what a chain fire is in a cap and ball revolver is when you pull the hammer back, pull the trigger, and then three, four, all six cylinders go off at once. Okay, very unpleasant. Didn't damage the gun, didn't hurt me, but uh, it scares you half to death when it happens. And out of all these different pistols, this was the only one that did it. I bought this gun used, and I, like I'm saying, from the style of the handle where it come in, the EMF for somebody back is back in the 70s. This is an old gun. <clears throat> so, we're going to take a look at what caused it. And, and the thing about this, and that's why I told you, it's probably better to buy a newer ones. You know, you can find these old ones laying around. I don't know what it is. People buy them. And then they don't ever shoot them. And the guns could be laying around 30 years and, and they're brand new in the box still. Okay. So be wary. And you can get a deal on them. You can pick them up fairly reasonable when people have had them lying around and, and don't know what to do with them. Uh, but the newer versions, like this here, I'm not quite sure what year this is made. I picked it up maybe four years ago. So it's in the 2000s, but there's a little bit of a difference in this gun, even though there's earlier versions, uh, and I'll show you that when we take them apart. <clears throat> First of all, the quality, and also there's something else that they're doing that must be a reoccurring problem. Now, chain firing, uh, you get into this or look this up online, this, you're going to get into one hell of a discussion over this stuff. There's all kinds of theories. And everything else is either two things cause it when you fire the pistol the, the blast from the gap in that sets them off from the front or there's something wrong in the back and the blast here when the cap goes off comes up around and sets them off in in the back okay and you can get in the long and short of it but once I get the guns apart Okay, I'll explain how I looked at it. I did some research, listened to what people said, and I figured out what I think is wrong, what the problem is. But I'm going to get the two guns apart here. Okay, I have the uh, two guns apart. Old gun, new gun. All right, so in the discussion, everyone was saying, well, what the big problem is, is one old timer said you're sloppily reloading, you're getting powder around the ball when you run the ram in there or it's on the side and that's what touches off the uh, cylinders. Some people say it comes from back here where the nipples are that if uh, this is area is screwed up when you fire it'll from the frame trigger them all off. Okay so to make a long story short, the one guy went and said, hey, you know, what it is, sloppy reloading, and then he goes, I found out something else. If there is a sharp edge, okay, and this is a manufacturing thing, if you look at this cylinder here, and you run your finger and you can see the edges have a chamfer or a bevel on them. This is on a newer gun. On the older gun, there is no chamfer or bevel. And I went and looked at all of these other guns. This edge is broken on the mouth of these chambers on all of them. And I've never had that problem. This here is sharp as a razor. So what happens is, and this is where you have a compound problem. This problem is when you're ramming the bullet down and it's, it's going in kind of cockeyed, the sharp edge is shaving off a hunk of lead it's disproportionate and leaving a gap to where a spark can go around the ball in the chamber and set it up. And the other argument is wrong size balls. <clears throat> and how this guy proved that it's the chain fire starts from the front of the cylinder, not the rear, is he tried to trigger chain fires by not putting caps on or something and all this other stuff and it wouldn't do it. And also another guy, Blackie there, he said that he shoot an original gun and he did a thing where he shined a light and all this stuff. And what it was is the chamber 
was out around on an old antique gun. Or you are using the wrong ball size. All of these guns are marked 44 on the side of them, but some of them use a totally different size round ball. Almost four or five thousandths difference. Okay, so what you have with this is a compound problem. This particular gun is not chamfered. This is causing the problem. But then again, you have to measure your cylinders and figure out what um, size ball to use. And you want it a little bit bigger so it compresses in there and seals. And then you put, people say, use a Wonder Watt or put the grease over the, the cylinder, which I think I did that. But if you do that with that soft lube or grease, when you fire one round, all that stuff melts and runs out of the gun. Okay, and then it'll chain fire. So <clears throat> that's why I make these videos. I'm warning you guys. I'm going to take this old gun. Now I went and I pulled the nipples out and it's kind of grungy and mangy. And what I did is I went and measured them and inspected them to make sure they were all the same, same height, same size. Checked it against a place that sold replacement ones. And the sizes, thread size, and everything is correct. So it's not the nipples. That's not what caused the chain fire. So now I'm going to go down. I'm going to put a chamfer on here. Now you could do it with a hand tool if you have one big enough. Or you get a chamfer tool running in the drill press and then just gently, you know, just gently put a little bit of pressure and chamfer the mouths of this uh, cylinder. And that's what I'm going to go. I'm going to go do that now. I'm not going to. <clears throat> All right, what we're doing here is I put a countersink in my chuck. I've already hit two holes already, and it's going real slow, under 100 RPM. And you just kind of line it up, give it a little bit of pressure, and it breaks the edge. No more sharp edge. Takes the bluing off, which may create rust, but it's basically you can do this in a drill press. This is just for me, it's a little bit easier. Like I said, all it has to do is take the sharp edge off. So I'm going to do the other cylinders. And there we go. They're all chamfered now. Okay, so that's that part of it. Now we'll try to get the gun back together. Okay, we have our cylinder chamfered, cleaned out most of the chips. And now it's time to put our nipples on. So you got this anti-seize lubricant. Okay, which whenever you generally clean these guns, you got to pull all this apart, clean all the crud out, and then you put this on the threads because they will rust in there. That's one thing. These guns need a lot of maintenance. Okay, put this down in there, get our wrench. Now that we've measured these and checked, that there's nothing wrong with the nipples in terms of length and all that other stuff. They are the right ones in there. They're not damaged. They're not short. Tighten it down. And do that with all six. And then uh, that's how you get her all back together. Now, the reason I'm going to also mention this is once I get this back together and while we have the gun apart, we're going to take a measurement 
because there may be some confusion on what size ball to uh, use. Because like I said, yeah, we took care of this problem. But there's another part of the problem is using an undersized ball in the cylinder for your gun. So let me try getting this. All right. So I'm going to go and finish up this operation and we're going to discuss something else while we're out here because I was doing an inventory of the uh, balls that I had. Okay, like I said, this is a compound problem. Here's our other problem. Here's an assortment of lead balls that I have uh, accumulated over the years. And let's look at what we got here. We got 45 caliber, okay. And these are a 445 diameter. Then we have 44 caliber at a 451 diameter. And we have 44 caliber at a 454 diameter. Okay. All right. 36 caliber, 375 diameter. And I got these 454, so I was using that in something. Uh, got these different spear bullets. As you see, 454, 457. Here's a nice one. 45 caliber bullets. 440 diameter. So I have a whole assortment here. So what I'm trying to tell you is, if you buy, it's nice to buy one new, get the paperwork, and uh, know what diameter bullet you need. If you put one that's a little too on a small side, it's going to chain fire, okay? That's going to be a problem. And uh, how do you know? Well, we're going to go up, we're going to measure some of the cylinders and come up. That's 375, so I know what that 36 is out there. We'll measure that cylinder. That's what I've been using in there and have had no problems. Um, I know the Rogers and Spencers takes like the, it's almost uh, 450 something, I forget, it's a larger bullet um, on there. So you got to measure it, you got to know your gun. And if you're going to go, hey, I'm going to go get a bullet mold and cast, you know, my gun takes a 454 bullets. And you go and get a mold, and you start casting bullets. Better make sure that them bullets are coming out at 454, and not like 453 or 452, because your uh, lead was a little cool or something. That that'll trip you up also. So we'll go up, finish the discussion with this, and get that gun back together. <clears throat> okay, so. I lost the paperwork for these new guns, so I don't have them. It's got to be somewhere. I just don't know where it is. And it tells you what diameter bullet to use in here. So, 375. Let's measure the 36 caliber cylinders. Okay. And they're coming up 367. Or 66. Okay, so you're going almost 10 thousandths over with the bullet. Alright, so using that as a premise, we'll measure this 44, which is coming out about 449, 450, so 458. 457 should be what we're using on this. Let me go measure that Rogers and Spencer's. Hold on a second here, guys. Okay, okay I got it apart. And let's see what this one is. Oh, 450. Yeah, 458. What are they? 440 and
Yep, 458, which is about what this is here. Yep. Just out of curiosity, see if I can get a quick read on this one. Okay, this one's about 446. So, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Go by what it is. But as you see, them bullets vary um, in diameter. So you got to be careful and make sure you're getting the right size bullet to go in the gun to prevent the chain fires. Alright, well I hope you like our adventure so far in the world of black powder. I'm going to get everything back together and try to upload some of this. Uh, so, if you're enjoying it, we'll probably get more. Leave some comments. Uh, tell me if you like it or what you'd like to see. Or we can discuss it on Sunday when we have the uh, uh, live, live with Coba. Alright guys? Alright, stay tuned and take it easy.